Brighton have just launched their S500 cycling computer, which they claim is going to rival the Hammerhead Carew series of computers. Now, as many of you watching this vlog will know, I ride with the Hammerhead 1 and I really like it because it's got a whole load of unique features that many other cycling computers don't have. So today I'm going to be asking the question, how do these two computers compare and is the S500 a real alternative to the Carew? Now I'm not going to waste time going over the obvious. Just like every other single GPS cycling computer in the world, if you have the appropriate AMP Plus sensors, the S500 will accurately measure, display and record all of the usual cycling metrics such as heart rate, speed, distance, cadence and power etc. And it's also GPS enabled so it will record your route and of course upload all of that data to third party apps such as Strava. And speaking of sensors, once the S500 is connected via Ant Plus to things like cadence and power sensors, that connection is rock solid, unlike the Karoo. In my experience, if I stop for more than about 90 seconds, it just wants to disconnect and then you have to try and reconnect them all again as you're riding. It's really, really annoying. It has a 2.4 inch screen which is considerably smaller than the Carew 1 screen and just like the Carew it also has four buttons that you can use to navigate the various menus. Now again in my experience when I'm using my Carew in the rain the drops falling on the screen can cause it to do some pretty strange things but conveniently the S500 has a very clever little screen lock button and it prevents all of those false inputs. It has what appears to be a standard quarter turn mount, but don't be fooled. This is Brighton's own proprietary mount and it's not always 100% compatible with things like the Garmin out front mounts. Fortunately, if you buy the S500, you get a fairly basic mount that comes with it and you can also buy some other Brighton specific mounts. But I personally like using this TTA mount from a company called Magic Shine. It's really good quality and it mounts just about any cycling computer that I want to put on it, including the Carew, which as many people will know is quite a long cycling computer. So finding a mount that's long enough to fit it is very tricky. Charging is very simple and straightforward. It uses a standard USB-C lead. One end goes into the back of the computer. The other end plugs into a standard USB wall socket and charging takes about an hour. Once fully charged, it will last, well, until the end of time, probably, maybe even longer. Actually, seriously though, it has some amazing battery life. For instance, I charged this unit up about a month ago and since then, I've done about more or less 31 hour or so rides and it still has about 30% charge. Now this is an absolute game changer when compared to the Carew. The last 100 kilometer ride I did using my Carew, it lasted for about five hours and then just stopped working because the battery ran out. Like all Brighton cycling computers, it's designed to be used with the free smartphone app. And by using this, you can do things such as customize screens, change settings, view your rides, or even get a detailed breakdown of the stats of those rides, which is particularly useful if you want to take a closer look at the numbers for training purposes. It also has an excellent navigation feature, and you can create routes in a variety of ways. You can either import them from third-party apps such as Strava, or you can import them from the rides that you've already done using the S500, or you can even create them from scratch by using the very clever voice search feature that's powered by Google, no less. The S500 and the smartphone app are connected via Bluetooth, so that when you come back from your ride and you press save, 
as long as your two accounts are connected it will automatically upload your ride wirelessly to Strava and this is a massive improvement over my Karoo One which needs a Wi-Fi connection if you don't have it you have to use your phone and it's really really inconvenient unlike the Karoo the S500 has OSM regional maps pre-installed so there's no need to download anything or do any complex file juggling later on. By contrast my Karoo One has a very limited memory space and the maps that it uses are quite large and sometimes you have to do some pretty strange things. So for instance when I went cycling in Italy I first had to delete the UK maps before I could download and use the Italian maps and then obviously when I came back to the UK I had to delete all of the Italian maps off before I could get the UK maps back installed on the Karoo. So far the navigation feature on the S500 is working really really well. The colour screen and the maps are very clear and easy to follow. The routes are very clear and easy to follow and it even has audible alerts to let you know when a turn's coming up. Compare that to my Karoo One which is a completely silent device. It literally has no means of creating any sound whatsoever. The only way you can get turn by turn navigations with it is if you have the Bluetooth headphones paired. And that is really, really inconvenient if you're following an unfamiliar route. The last time I did that, I seemed to spend as much stood by the side of the road checking for my next turn as I did cycling. It also has intelligent rerouting and on-screen points of interest. So if you do somehow manage to get yourself lost, it can quickly and effectively get you back on track. And if you're a bit hungry, it can even take you to the nearest cafe. If you want to get a bit social, you can generate a live track link that your friends can use to follow your route in real time. Now you do this via the app and then once you have the link, you can send it via text or email or even post it on social media. If you are following a route, the S500 has a very clever climb challenge page, which is very similar to the climber page on the Karoo, which is one of my favorite features. Once it's activated, it automatically generates a color coded profile of the climb that you're about to do, complete with stats such as gradients and distance. It will then automatically track your progress along that climb, updating the stats as you go. Sadly though, unlike the Karoo, the S500 does not have Strava Live segments. Yep, I know. To be fair though, neither did the Karoo when I first got it. This was something that Hammerhead later introduced as a firmware update. And that said, there's absolutely no reason why Brighton can't do exactly the same at some later date. In addition to being able to communicate with your smartphone, the S500 can also communicate with your smart trainer and control things like resistance and power. So you can recreate favorite on-road routes from the rides that you've already done, or you can create custom workouts from scratch. It can even give you graphical representations of all of the data right there on the screen in front of you. If you're an e-bike rider, the S500 can pair via Ant Plus with compatible brands to show things like battery levels, assist levels and range. And similarly, if you're using one of these electronic gear systems such as DI2 or SRAM RED, you can get a graphical representation of your gearing right there on the screen. And if you have one of these Garmin Varia radar devices, it can pair with that too. But sadly, I don't, so there's not really much more I can add to that. One of my favorite features is the message alert. So for instance, if you're cycling along and you get a text message 
or a phone call or even if somebody comments on your YouTube channel as long as the S500 is paired with your smartphone it will flash up the first few lines or the number of the person that's calling you and then you can scroll through and see the rest of it. Now this is great if you don't want to stop and find out if the message is so important that you need to reply to it immediately. Now I know that this feature is just not available on my Karoo 1 but it is a feature on the new updated Karoo 2. I've been using the S500 for a few weeks now and I have to say that I'm really really enjoying it. As you can imagine it's super accurate and it has some amazing features which are equal to and in some cases even better than the Karoo 1. On the downside though the screen is rather small when compared to the massive one on the Karoo 1. If you look at the Karoo 2 though it's a very similar size. The Karoo 2 is 3.2 inches and the S500 is 2.4 inches. At the time of making this vlog, the S500 does not have Strava live segments. And I know for some of you this is going to be an absolute deal breaker, but hopefully this is something that can be added with a future firmware update. Price wise, the base unit of the S500 retails for about £200 or €300. Euros, $300. If you're trying to get hold of a Karoo 1, well, good luck with that because Hammerhead stopped making those quite a while ago. The only way you're going to find one now is second hand and then obviously the price and the quality is going to vary. You could, however, buy a brand new Karoo 2 and you can get those from Hammerhead Direct or somewhere like Wiggle and they retail new for about £330 or $450. I'm not going to hide it. For all of its flaws and all of its quirks, I love my Karoo 1 and I really enjoy using it. But realistically, I know that if I'm going to do any long rides, it's just not going to be up to the job. In which case, I'll turn to the S500 every time. If you are in the market for a cycling computer that has a few more features than the usual suspects, then I suspect you've been looking at something like the updated Karoo 2 or something similar. In my opinion, the S500 is a fantastic choice. It has all of that functionality and all of the bells and whistles that you could realistically want, but for a lot less money. I'll leave a link to the Brighton website below so you can go and have a look at it in a bit more detail. But in the meantime, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.